Welcome, I'm Megan Walker and we have reached the letter C in the A to Z of real-time marketing and C is all about the consent center. Now I'm going to talk a little bit first before we jump in and take a look about um, what that actually means in terms of if you can send stuff to your contacts, whether it's an email or in real-time marketing, whether it's a text message. So ultimately the the king or the queen of all things is the field on the contact record that is about the um, do not allow bulk emails. So if that's set to allow, great. If it's not, you're not going to be able to send stuff. So one of the things I always say to clients is really it doesn't necessarily matter so much whether you're using um, current consent center settings, whatever you're doing, if that is set to do not allow, you're not going to be able to send an email. However, there is a circumstance when you would be able to and that's depending on the type of email whether you're sending a commercial email or a transactional email so if you're sending commercial emails then that that do not allow absolutely has to be set to allow for the bulk emails that that's the big thing if it's transactional meaning that you have a business relationship and this is a specific business email that you must send such as um, downtime for your product, um, support closure hours, or something about um, a product that's just been purchased. That's a transactional email. I must send this to you as my client. It is important that you get this. So those are just a couple of other things to, to consider first of all. So real-time marketing before or without bound marketing, that is based on on the contact record itself that's what we're looking at in terms of um, the level of consent that somebody's given. What we're looking at with real-time marketing, it's stored per email address or per phone number. So what that means is if I have an email address, have has the person that has that email address, have they allowed that? Is that email address set to actually have things sent to it? Same with the phone number. If it's something I want to send text messages, has somebody opted in or consented that I can actually text to that phone number? So those are things that are important to know is that it is slightly different. Now, if you've been doing stuff with outbound marketing and you want to go ahead and send something with real-time marketing, you can do. There's there's nothing that you have to do to start using this new consent center. Um, it will look to see, again, has somebody actually said, I allow emails to be sent. That's the, the top dog, so to speak. Um, but I don't have to go in and do anything in order to start sending emails. Totally fine. So we're going to jump in and take a look at the Consent Center to see what it's all about. Um, it's a little bit of a grey area. I'm going to put a link to Microsoft's documentation all about email and text consents so that you can read through it as well because that's the official word. So I'll put that in the description. And now let's go ahead and actually take a look at the product and see how this works. Okay, so from the real-time marketing area, we're going to go down to the consent center. Now, the very first time, if we're loading the consent center, then we're basically, what we're doing is we're going and looking at contact records that already exist, and it's using that allow bulk email field, whether it's either allow or do not allow, it's going to use that, and it's going to use that to say whether somebody's opted in or not. Um, so it's going to go ahead and look through them. Now there are a couple of things that are important to keep in mind. So the first thing is going to be that only one email address from a contact record. So if you're using like email, email two, email three, that kind of thing, or a custom one, it's only going to use one email address. Now that can be defined in, there's an audience configuration area, it can be defined in there, but most people I think are using just the regular email one field, so it should be fine. Um, so like I said, it's loaded from the allow bulk email field. Now, if two or more or one, no, yeah. So basically, if you've got more than one contact with the same email address, then it's only going to set to allow when all of the contacts have got that set to allow on bulk email. 
So let's say that you have um, husband and wife, father and son, mother, daughter, whatever, and they have the same email on their um, field, on their email field. If one's got it set to allow and one's do not allow, then it's going to basically have it set as do not allow. So both need to be set to allow. So I know that there are companies that use the uh, or have the concept of um, one email address is going to be on multiple records so that's going to be a bit of a challenge not really sure uh, what I can say on that one because that's how it works so if they're using the same email address unfortunately they both have to have it set to allow um, so those are some things to to consider to keep in mind um, so that's what's essentially what's going to happen the first time. So it's going through, it's a one-time process. Um, I've already done it, which is why there are records that are already showing up. So if we let that continue, that will basically go through and it would pull all of the contacts and um, bring them in here. So when we're loading, we can reload, but we don't need to reload every time. It, it truly should just be like a, a one-time thing to, to pull in that information. So... As it's going through, it's pulling that, that information, it's going to then list them all like you can see here. So we've got all of our contacts that would be loaded. Now what we can also do is we can manually create these email consent records. So I could go in and let's say that uh, I've just spoken with a contact, then I could go ahead, if this is somebody that I've added in later on, I could just go and say that actually this person is saying they want to allow email and also allow tracking, so cookies to be added to my browser when I'm clicking on these emails. So what's the reason in terms of the change and then also who requested that, who's making that change. So that could be some information about the contact said, it was over the phone, that kind of thing. I can also look for existing emails and from here I could go ahead and say, well actually this person's now opting out or this email address is opting out. So again, who's made that change? Now, if I go ahead and I look at one of the text message ones, so I can go ahead and open that, we can see what's the phone number that has this consent level, and this one, this phone number has that they've opted in, and also opted in for tracking as well, and what's the reason, that kind of thing. Finally, we can also use the search at the top, so we can use search functionality to quickly find someone, so I can search based on name, so we can see here that we've got two different email addresses, but there are two records for each. So the top one we've got Jane at MeganVWalker.com. She's opted out of marketing communication, so that means she doesn't want us to be sending any emails. And she's also opted out of tracking. So even if she'd said, yes, you can send me emails, she doesn't want to be tracked. So she doesn't want the interactions that she has through the email, which end up going into the, to the website, to actually be tracked and monitored. And then we've got uh, another email with the word Jane, Jane Contact Doe. She's opted in to both marketing communication and tracking. So we can always get a, a visual overview. Now what we've looked at here is the consent center where you can see all of the records. So you can actually search for and find if somebody's opted in, opted out, that kind of thing. We are going to look at in a later video where we're actually going to see, well, what does it look like if somebody clicks at the bottom of an email from the real-time marketing area and then they interact with what the page looks like to determine their con own consent level. So that's where they're interacting and they're the ones that are updating or changing what the level of consent is that's been provided. So again, we'll look, that, look at that in another video. So definitely have a look in the description below at the link that I'm posting to the Microsoft documentation because it's important that this is understood. It does feel a little bit, okay, well, hang on. I've got consent given in outbound marketing. I've got consent center settings in real-time marketing. And yes, it does feel like there's a little bit of like, yeah. Um, so hopefully that will change over time and it will blend more into just one place. But for now, it is a uh, important to understand if you're going to use real-time marketing, what the consent center is all about. So let me know what you think in the comments below. A little bit confusing. Once we start looking at tying these sort of videos together, you'll be able to see, oh, okay, well now I understand this is the consent center. This is where it would be used. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. It is quite confusing, I feel, because there are still two places to do things. So this is the letter C, consent center. 
um, let me know what you think. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.